morning, everyone. Welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. Our sponsors today are Area Agency on Aging of Tarrant County and United Way of Tarrant County. Our Zoom event is being recorded for the purpose of future use by our families and communities. Dementia Friendly Fort Worth proudly presents Still Life Painting, The Lobster by Arthur Dove. And we have Erin Long here from Eamon Carter Museum to tell us all about this Still Life Painting. Today is Friday, July 10th. Erin, we're so glad you're here. All right. Thank you so much for welcoming me to your group today. I feel really honored to be part of your Friday. I uh, want to start you off. Again, I'm Erin Long. I'm a gallery teacher here at the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. And I thought we might begin today by taking a view of the museum itself, as it is this morning. Uh, this is our front gallery, part of our uh, 1961 addition to the opening of the museum. This is the original building that the museum was in. Um, and right now this houses our uh, 20th century gallery. So we have lots of exciting works from the 20th century. And one of the things we'll be talking about today is the transition of still life painting into the modern era. So that's kind of what we're going to be playing with today. But I thought I'd give you a view of the galleries and, and all of our gallery um, assistants. Um, masked up. We're all wearing masks in the galleries right now. I have mine off um, so that we can talk this morning, but, but it's a, a new world in museums and we're all adapting. Let me share my screen first so we can see the beginnings of still life painting in the United States. Um, this is the front of the museum that you're seeing here. Again, built in 1961 by Eamon Carter. And one of the earliest paintings we have in our collection is this one by Raphael Peel. And I'm just gonna let you take a minute to look at this and let me know what you're seeing and what you're thinking about what you're seeing. The detail on the peaches is just magnificent. Are those peaches or are they nectarines? Uh, it, it looks I, like there's a little fuzz on there, but I can't tell. It looks fuzzy to me too. Uh, the title of this painting is Peaches and Grapes with Chinese Export Basket. So the artist identifies them as peaches and they do look really fuzzy. Beautiful. Any other observations or thoughts about this? Tell us more. <laughs> well, this artist um, was painting in the 18, the early decades of the 1800s. And his father was a famous, perhaps the most famous artist in the United States, the creator of the first museum um, in the United States in Philadelphia. His father was named Charles Wilson Peel. He named almost all of his children after inventors and artists from the Renaissance period. And so here we have Raphael. And Raphael was painting these still lives at a time when this was the least important kind of painting there was, at least according to Charles Wilson Peel. He thought that this was um, lowly and common kind of painting to do, but Raphael Peel insisted that he could share something about the new American Republic through these paintings. And what you need to know about the Peel family is that they had greenhouses that were heated in Philadelphia at a time when even most homes were heated only by a simple kitchen fireplace, and so this was kind of a, a heightened experience where they grew 
traditional varieties and used science, the science of, of water consumption, the science of fertilization to perfect the produce that they were, that they were creating. So this is a sign of both wealth and luxury. And the basket that it's in, that beautiful pierced porcelain basket came from China, which for Peel seemed like a confirmation that the United States had arrived as a trading nation, as an important player on the world stage. So he's not just sharing these juicy, delicious peaches with us. He's making a commentary about the abundance and the wealth of the United States. So that's one of the things he is working with. Very traditional. Anything you'd like to add about this? I'm curious about your reactions to the surface and the background that these objects are sitting on. What are you noticing about that? I have a hard time seeing much of a difference between the table and the wall. Excellent observation. Yeah, both of them are really neutral colors. Uh -huh. There's nothing, nothing about either of these things that distinguishes them as important in the painting. They're just a place for these fruits and basket to rest. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be important when we move a century later and look at our main focus today. Mm -hmm. This is the same kind of painting, the same lowly still life painting that Charles Wilson Peale talked about. Ooh. And I'm gonna zoom us in a little bit. Do y'all feel comfortable with that? Be great. Okay, you may feel a little seasick as this camera moves us in. Okay, so I'm gonna start there. This is by a man named Arthur Dove, and he's painting in 1907. Or yeah, he's, well, he starts this painting in 1907 um, and finishes it in Paris in 1908. So he's an American artist working away from the United States. He's in Paris with the Fauves, the wild people of art at that time. And and when he's painting this, they are applauding and, and enjoying what he's doing. So I'm going to let us take a quick look. Thinking about the painting from a century before. This is really different. I'm going to bring us in closer. Let you look at those grapes. Again, the same fruit looks entirely different here. What can you tell about the way that these grapes are painted just by pulling in this close? Do you have any clues about the artist's style? It's, it's not as distinct as the other grapes were they were more individual on the other one. Yes, so this almost looks like a, a mass of grapes rather than individual, that's a great observation, rather than individual grapes. Mm -hmm. And if we zoom in just a little more, you might be able to see how much paint is on the individual strokes. Can you see how bumpy that is uh -huh. on your screens? This artist has made no attempt to hide the fact that there's a paintbrush and a person involved here. He's creating this and his work matters. So he's thinking about the role of artist as very different than Raphael Peel did. Oops. Okay. Take a look there. What are we seeing there? It's like an apple. Oh, it does. It's very rounded. 
we'll pull back in just a second and look at that in the larger context. We do have what looks like some peaches here and even, oh, sorry, if I'm making anyone seasick, my apologies. There we go. And even a head of lettuce, which while we're this close, looks just like some green lines or some material um, piled up there. What he's painting for us there is a whole head of lettuce. So I'm gonna pull back away. Is that a lobster in the dish it in front? Is, it is a lobster. Good job, Patrick. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> I focused on the inner part. I didn't see the claws. Yeah, it's hard it, when we're so close looking at the, at the small details of the artist's brush. But we do have this lobster sitting in a dish here. Um, and I always ask my students um, what you know for sure about that lobster based on what you see here. It's dead. Yes, exactly. You know, it kind of looks like wallpaper behind that thing. <laughs> I have a question for you. What made you think it was wallpaper rather than actual plants in a garden? Just the way it looks. Yes, I, you are absolutely right. We believe that this is a table in a parlor with this fancy, fancy French wallpaper behind it. So these tangles of vines and flowers and that pink flower there almost looks like a rose to me. Are you guys seeing that? That's what I thought too. Yeah, and it's hard to distinguish. It looks so florid and beautiful and colorful that I almost want to think it's out in a garden, but we believe this is an interior scene and I wanna show you where the artist gets cute with us. I'm gonna zoom in really quickly. What do you see? Squirrel. Yes. <laughs> so he's included a little squirrel here, which kind of implies that we're outside, but again, we believe that we're inside. And I saw something the other day that I've worked with this painting for 18 years had never seen this creature in the upper right hand corner. The Do you mouse. see this? It looks like a mouse or a bird. Someone pointed that out to me the other day and I have looked at this painting every day for 18 years, never saw it. So that's one of the beauties of um, having a chance to see these objects over and over again is that you see something new every single time. So again, this is Arthur Dub, 1907. What are things like in 1907? What are people thinking about, worrying about? There's no electricity. There is, in most homes in the United States, there's no electricity available. Indoor plumbing is scarce, even in 1907. So based on that, what kind of home do you think we're looking at here? Looking at what's upper, on the table. Putting an up, upscale, upscale home. Upper class. Yes. class. Yeah. What, are you, what are you seeing that leads you down that path? The lobster. The lobster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got, paper. we've got lobster and we've got a highly decorated interior room. And I don't know about you, but that picture on the right-hand side of the painting looks pretty substantial. It looks like a pretty fine piece of, of pottery. So we have a lot going on here. And I also want you to notice the composition, the way that Arthur Dove arranged these objects to paint. So he's gathered them very closely, just like Raphael Peel did. They're, they're gathered in the center of the table and the artist is focused on creating something kind of a pleasing mass. And I, it looks like I'm closer than I am. Don't get worried about the painting. Um, so I'm about two feet away from the painting. But we're seeing almost this triangle 
of objects on a table. So he's arranged it really carefully to make it a pleasing thing for us. And he's focused really closely on the table. Ooh, sorry about that. In a way that Raphael Peel didn't. I want you to look at this beautiful tablecloth and the way he created the colors. So I'm gonna zoom us in. What colors are you noticing in this white tablecloth? Oh, little pink, little blue. Little yeah. blue. Yep. Lots of pink. What are you seeing, Janet? Pink. Yep. Pinks and blues and aquas. And even a little bit of mauve there. So he's, he's creating this white color with these broad strokes of paint. And again, he's not hiding that he's the one doing this. The artist is present in this painting in a way that Raphael Peel didn't want to be present. He wanted to remove himself and almost create a camera-like approach. So what's happened in the intervening years between Peel and Dove is that we now have photography as a practice in the United States. You can go to the store and buy a camera and buy film. And so the act of making a painting that looks real is something that a, a, a camera can do. And so the role of the artist is changing. We're seeing their presence in the works of art. The other thing I want you to notice is the heavy dark outline around each of the objects. We don't have those same rounded edges, the soft fuzzy texture of the peaches. What we have are these boldly outlined objects. Any thoughts about why the artist might have chosen to do that or does it remind you of anything? Our students often talk about comics when they look at this. Think Peanuts or Beetle Bailey in, in the newspaper. These bold edges really highlight each object and almost flatten them out. I don't know, does this look two-dimensional to you or more three-dimensional? Yeah, that's more two. Yeah, it really is. It kind of flattens out the space a little bit, which makes us question how deep this garden is. Now, you don't have the garden. shadow. You don't have the shadows that the other one did. Absolutely. So this is a much less um, realistic work of art. We're not concerned about shadow. Um, we do see that roundness in things that was present in the other one, but this is really designed to be a flat space so that we don't know exactly how far back it goes, which I think is really interesting. All right, <laughs> questions before we move on to our activity? <clears throat> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to move us down the hallway. We're gonna walk through the museum back to my office. And it's gonna be kind of wobbly for a second. And I'm gonna put my mask on while I'm moving through the museum. And what you're gonna see as we move into this space, the 20th century galleries are receding behind us. And I'm gonna go over a bump here, so it's gonna get really wobbly for a second. We're coming into a gallery where we have a work on the wall by Justin Favela. And what you can't see is that this is floor to ceiling. Any sense of what we're looking at here? or what material 
I'm going to get closer and see if that helps. Looks like oil on canvas of an abstract river and forest. Oh, beautiful. It does, doesn't it? Looks like paper mache. Looks like paper mache. Let's get closer and see what you think. Is it little bitty strips of paper? It is. Wow. This is made entirely of tissue paper. So those same bold colors that Arthur Dove is using in his still life of a lobster. We have Justin Phillip. Let me give you a sense of the scale. So this is an abstract landscape. And you can see a train trestle moving through the space, the mountains, and really, really riotous vegetation all over the place. So Justin Favela is creating an image of the first railroad that traveled from Veracruz to Mexico City. And this is really immersive. You walk through this space and you are surrounded on both sides by this beautiful tissue paper. Erin, is there a name for the use of the tissue paper like that? There's not a name for the style. Mr. Favela um, is really um, one of the only artists working in this way. Um, he does, he's making a nod. Um, his family is from Guatemala and Mexico. So he's making a nod to his own um, culture and traditions with the use of piñata or papel picado with that tissue paper. Okay, so you guys are going to go behind the scenes with me now. I'm going to disappear for a second while I open the door to my office. Michelle's here. Jeff. You're muted. Hello. There you go. <laughs> oh, hey. Morning, Michelle. I'm Janet Anderson. Yes, how are you? I'm filling in for Gail this week. Okay, I got to do that on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So we're glad you're here. And Erin Long is our presenter, and she's just talking about the artwork, Damon Carter. Right. So this is the room where the magic happens. And it's going to take me just a second to get my camera plugged in. There we go. And I'm gonna to change to a document camera so that you can see my hands at work. There we go. Can you see my equipment here? Yep, yep. Okay. All right, so one of the things we had talked about, and I'm going to turn my computer so I can see it, is the way that Arthur Dove was working. And so if you'd like to participate, you might grab a pencil, a writing surface, some color if you have it. And I'm going to try my hand at a still life. So I turn my light on. The objects I have here are a cup. This reminded me of the wallpaper that we saw in the Arthur Dove image. I have grapes because those were present in both of our still lives and a little yellow flower. So if you wanna grab materials around you, just the normal everyday objects that you have around you. And if you'll forgive me, I've never worked on a surface like this before. So this is brand new for me. I'm going to start with 
with my mug. Can you see my marks? Yes. Start with the mug. That handle looks a little more like an ear than a handle, doesn't it? And then, and Michelle, when this whole program started, I asked everyone for um, their patience and grace with my drawing abilities. I'm just roughing out the shapes here. are we doing on time, Janet? We are, it's 11.01 and we want to push out probably in about three or four minutes. Okay, so I won't spend much time on, um, on color here, but what I wanted you to notice in your own work is how that addition of a bold black outline changes your own drawing. And this was something that was a really a revelation. We did this activity with older students and they were used to the idea of drawing and sketching. Some of them were really nervous about making marks on paper in public. That, and I also get real nervous about that. I notice the stripes inside of my cup. I give it a green handle. So this is something we're used to doing. Creating shapes on paper. to make the cup a little bit blue. That looks wonderful, Erin. Thank you for the support, Janet. I'm feeling very nervous about this right now. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> okay, so we have these beautiful things. I'm gonna add a little heaviness to the bottom of the grapes because my light is coming from the top and they're shadowed underneath. Okay, so what I have here is, um, let me see if I can get it in the frame. This is a china marker. It's a really waxy crayon um, that, that is used to make marks on porcelain or china. This is why it carries that name. I believe this one is made in the United States. So this is really about what the mark, the purpose of the marker is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down these heavy, heavy black lines. So you can see how it changes the image. And I'm just choosing the shapes that feel most important. Is that changing the way you all see this? It's very defining. Yes. And students love these mark makers because it, it reacts really differently with paper than the, the implements that they're used to. Is anybody else working with materials at home? I tried, but I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and I are in good company then. What did you try to draw? Remote right controls. <laughs> oh, nice. Can you see it? L lift it just a little bit. Oh, that's beautiful. So you were drawing my still life. Yep. Your uh, grapes are much better than mine. Well done. I drew my coffee cup. <laughs> Yours looks more enticing than mine. <laughs> 
Yes, but yours is full of coffee, so I like yours. Better. There's my remote controls. <laughs> that's a beautiful, that, what a great choice to draw your remote control. I think that's a perfect choice. Every different item. <laughs> So are we still okay on time? Do I have time to say goodbye? Um, we need to finish up and I have a few lots, uh, a few slides that I need to show. So whatever you would like to say to our group. I just wanted to say thank you for sharing some time with me today. I really enjoyed being with you. I'll be back on uh, the 24th of July and we'll have um, other educators from the museum present to you. Um, Nancy Strickland and Peggy Spear are going to be with us for other days. So I, we're so grateful that you've allowed us into your experiences on Fridays and Wednesdays, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Bye, guys. You. I look forward Bye. to seeing you again. Bye. Okay, I need to share a few more slides. I always wake up on Saturdays and Sundays and go, is it after 1030? Oh, it's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're glad you joined us today, Janine. It's good to see you. And Dementia Friendly Fort Worth proudly presents MindFit on Monday, July 13th at 1030 with Dave Parks. He's the owner from Home Care Assistance. And we hope you can join us for that day. And if you haven't registered and you need to register, just go to the following link and we appreciate it. And Are we supposed to register for that every day or every month or just once a long time ago? Um, it, if Gail has your information, then I think she's good, good. with that. Okay. And so um, I just, note that for the recording so um but that's it so thank you all for joining us and thank you for bearing with me this week as i go through my solo flight on being a zoom host and i hope you all have a great weekend thank you okay, thank you okay. bye 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 thank you again aaron my pleasure janet thank you so much great. for including me just great